The Lord be with you. Well, I am sitting outside on maybe one of the last nice days uh, as we are now in the season of fall. And we have been trying all throughout spring and summer and now fall to kind of just track the life cycle of nature, um, seeing how things kind of get planted uh, and just begin to bud in the spring. Uh, they need to be nurtured and they grow and they flourish over the summer. Uh, and then comes the harvest time where things become ripe uh, and things begin to go back into some level of dormancy. Uh, and this is not just a good exercise for the physical world, but also a good exercise for what is going on in the spiritual realm as well. Uh, so we have been using this governing passage from the letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, verses 19 through 23, which say, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So we see that the Apostle is very clearly trying to point out that uh, there are two different ways to plant and to nurture in the soil of our souls. There is a way that um, plants seeds and nurtures seeds in the flesh and those grow up into very, very negative things. Uh, but then there's a way to plant seeds and nurture seeds in the spirit and the Spirit wants to produce good fruit in our lives. And we can participate with that. We can cooperate with that. So we've been looking at each of these individual fruit. What does it look like to have love and joy and peace and forbearance and kindness and goodness? And today we want to look at that seventh fruit, faithfulness. Now in the Greek, this is the word pistis. Uh, and it can be translated as faith or as faithfulness. Both are nouns. Uh, there is just kind of a minute distinction between the two. So in terms of faith, uh, this is essentially the content of what one believes, uh, what is true about any given thing. Uh, when it comes to faithfulness, this is kind of that outward act upon what one believes. Uh, so it is the character of someone who is trustworthy. It's about fidelity. It's about sticking to one's beliefs. Uh, and we see both of these in both of the uh, First and the New Testaments. Uh, so the Greek translation of the Old Testament we call uh, the Septuagint. Uh, we see this word pistis appear both in reference to God and in reference to people. Uh, in terms of God, for example, the psalmist says, For the word of Yahweh is right and true. He is faithful, there is our word pistis, in all that he does. So God remains faithful in the way that he acts. Uh, there are also times where people act faithfully. Uh, we have this very interesting telling story about David before he is king. Uh, Saul, the current king, the first king, knows that um, God has rejected him and that he has anointed David and he is going to be calling David to serve as the king in days just around the corner. So Saul 
in fits of envy and rage, pursues David relentlessly and tries to have him killed. And on one of these instances, um, Saul and his army are camping uh, in this valley, and David and his men see them, and it's the dark of the night. Um, they are in a very deep sleep, uh, so David and one of his men sneaks into the camp and uh, gets right up to King Saul, who's sleeping at the center, supposed to be guarded by all of the men around him. Uh, and David takes Saul's personal spear and his water jug that are literally laying right there by Saul's head. Uh, and then David and his man sneak out of the camp and from a, a distance, far away, a safe distance, they call out to Saul. And they tell him um, that God had delivered you into my hands, but I didn't take your life because you are still the Lord's anointed that it is up to God to raise up the king and to depose the king. So David was just going to wait. But in his description of um, how Yahweh acts, he says, Yahweh rewards everyone for their righteousness and their faithfulness. That's that word pistis again. So David seems to think uh, God expects that people will act righteously in right ways, but they will also act faithfully, in fidelity with God, patiently waiting on God, trusting in God, and following God. And David believed he was doing just that. That's why God put Saul within his reach, to demonstrate David's faithfulness. Now, by the time we get to the New Testament, uh, we have this very interesting story in the Gospels, uh, where Jesus is becoming known as a great teacher and a healer, and he's inside this house teaching and fellowshipping with people. And so many have come to see him that this house is just overcrowded. Uh, and there are these men who have this friend uh, who is crippled. He's unable to walk. So they believe and they trust that Jesus is able to heal their friends. So they put their friend on a mat. They carry him all the way to this house where Jesus is at. And they realize the crowd is just too thick. They can't get in. So they climb up onto the roof of this house and they remove a portion of the roof and they lower their friend down on a mat right in front of Jesus. And it tells us that when Jesus saw their faith, not just the faith of the man on the mat, but his friends, what they were willing to do, Jesus says to the man, take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. You see, there's an interplay there between faith, what those people believed. Surely they believed, they trusted that Jesus was going to be able to heal their friend. Uh, but their faithfulness was in acting out on that, going to great lengths, even to invasively take apart a part of this man's roof and to lower their friend down so that he could be healed. Uh, and it's fair to say that Galatians itself, that very letter, has an awful lot to say about faith and faithfulness. That's one of the main themes in that letter. Uh, so maybe just concluding with something that comes up earlier in Galatians, earlier than this passage on the fruit of the Spirit, it actually says in Galatians 2, in talking about how we are justified by faith. In verse 16, it says, a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith, there's our word, pistis, in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith, our word again, in Jesus Christ, that he, we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Now, you notice how many times faith in Christ appears in that. That's three times in one verse. Uh, the last two times are actually redundant. They say exactly the same thing. We, too, have put our faith in Christ Jesus, that we may be justified by faith in Christ. Uh, because of that redundancy, some translators have looked at this word faith the second time uh, and have rendered it faithfulness, that maybe what the letter is actually saying is we have put our faith in Christ Jesus 
that we may be justified by the faithfulness of Christ. In other words, uh, what we trust about Jesus is that he's able to save. Uh, but the reason he is able to save is because of his faithfulness, his fidelity to God, his Father. He believed in his Father, he trusted in his Father, and he walked faithfully every step of this earthly journey with his Father. And if we want to be faithful people, then we need to look to Jesus and walk the way that he did. So if you are tired of faithlessness in our days and what is going on, if you are frustrated uh, by people wavering, by people not being people of character, uh, by being tempted into acts of wickedness, then maybe it's a good time for us to plant the seed of faithfulness in our own lives. Let the Spirit bear that character up in our hearts and in our souls and to walk uh, faithfully with Jesus. Now we have two more fruit of the Spirit to talk about in the days ahead. Uh, but until we get there, uh, in these days of faithlessness and trial and tribulation, may the peace of God be with you. Amen.